actually try something. According to Dr. J, I am not limited to 40 minutes. So rather than doing this as two meetings, which would be super annoying, I'm gonna go ahead and try it as one continuous meeting. If this kicks me out, well, after 40 minutes, then, oh well, we'll have a short class today. But oh, this is right. what we're gonna do. This is uh, how this I'm gonna is, do the main so classroom. If you wanna participate in Clicker, you, even if you're not getting these things, if you're signed up for Clicker and you sign in at 10, you'll still get the Clicker questions, I think. But, can I use my app? Yeah, you can use your app as long oh, as you're app. Okay. But guys, I'm so excited for this, guys. But I am going to record this and it's going to be uploaded to YouTube, to the channel The Chemistry Cowboy. I've already <laughs> loaded the lab, some like 90% of you guys' labs. So you can do those at any time. That I'm going to still put a due date on them so you actually don't swamp me at the end of the semester. But for example, if you're so bored, you actually want to do chemistry, you could do like all the acid based labs right now. I have them all uploaded. <laughs> so you can do the equilibrium lab, you can do the acid based lab, it's all there. So, okay, let's finish chapter 16 because good lord is there any way that we could go back through like a quick review yeah yeah i can, I can do a quick review real quick because i'm not gonna lie i haven't looked at any of this for two weeks yeah i, I can imagine mm -hmm. i mean hopefully you uh i gotta close out some stuff so my screen isn't a hot mess okay let's, let's move that move my pretty face down to the corner no, nope, no, nope, now it's on the bottom of the screen. Let's see. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, I can minimize that. Okay, give me a second. Yeah, okay. So, we talked about acids and bases. Acids and bases were, or were, we, we, we labeled them as Bronsted lorry is the main type. Oh, come on. Bronsted lorry is the main type where Bronsted was uh, as a Bronsted acid was a proton donor and a Bronsted lorry base was a proton acceptor. So I mean, anything that accepted an, a proton was a base. Now, mo you gotta be kidding me. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Yep. So beautiful. <laughs> Bound to happen. My spirit animal. My spirit animal. Yeah. Hunter, and Dr. Nelson would be so proud. <laughs> so true. So true. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to where we're at. But so we talked about strong acids and strong bases being ones that are heavily product favored uh, reactions. One where the K expression is very, very large so that it donates 100% of the protons when we deal with that. Now, now we can write an equilibrium expression based on any acid-base reaction. Remember, we don't include pure liquids, we don't include pure solids. And uh, the one last thing to note would be that The note would be that if you're writing a reversible reaction, there is a conjugate acid base pair. So an acid on one side of a reaction would be a base on another. And it loses a hydrogen, but and then it thus it becomes more negative. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we learned, we just started learning how to calculate pH. pH is a logarithmic scale of how to calculate the quantity of hydrogen in there because p is the potential metric scale for h which is our hydrogen so we take the negative log of the amount of hydrogen and that turns the scale from a 10 to the oh, from going from 1 to 10 to the negative 14th which is really small 
into something that goes from one to 14, which is something it's easier for us to picture. So we, we talked about things like KW, which is the equilibrium expression for water. Water breaks apart into acid and base. And the K for this is always 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. So meaning if there is acid in a solution, there is also base. If there's base in there, there's also acid. The more acid we have, the less base, the more, the more the more base, the less acid, but we never have zero of any of those things because zero times any number is what? Zero. Mm -hmm. So we have to equal 10 to the negative 14. Zero. zero. Is there someone waiting? Oh, I gotta see if is anyone, is anyone waiting in the chat or waiting to join? I just want to. Daniel, your eyes look so great. Me? Yes. Your eyes look amazing. <laughs> okay. So, I could. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we learned how to calculate pH by just taking a negative log of the hydronium amount. And for a base, if we. If for a base, we had to turn H plus into OH minus. And we learned also right here how to turn pH back into H plus. So you just reversed their negative log. So you took negative pH and then raised it to the inverse log, which is 10 to the power. And that gave you your hydronium. We talked about that. Now let's see where. We talked about POH. POH is the opposite of pH, where pH plus POH equals 14. Because remember, if H plus goes up, OH minus goes down. So a so those two numbers will be inversely related to the point where you can add them together to get you your original 14. Is this the one where you subtract the two? You subtract. <clears throat> if you have pH, you subtract 14 minus pH to get pOH. Okay. So like, let's look at this problem. We, we did this problem before, but I'm just going ahead and go full on review. That say, how do you calculate the pH of this? Well, that's an acid that that's going to lose because it's a strong acid. It's the amount of hydronium is 0.3. Negative log of 0.3 is going to be 0.52. Now, this is also an acid. So the negative log of this, it's a smaller number, so it's going to be a smaller pH. And finally, well, this is a base. So if I take the negative log of this, it does not give me the pH. It gives me the pOH. So, and so because I ask you in the problem, what is the pH, we're going to have to subtract the pH, the, the pOH from 14 to get the pH. <clears throat> ah. So this is going to produce OH minus. And so when you calculate that, it's going to be PA, pOH. Uh, we can find pOH of H. TL, you're going to just do the opposite where you find pH and then go the other way. Oh, yep, sorry. Olivia, we're just right now uh, doing a quick, quick review. Oh, the H, oh, we say, okay, this is saying I'm pH of this base, that's H plus, where we're going to reverse that. <clears throat> sorry. So you can look at those problems. Those problems are still up there. That's what we talked about. We did that clicker. Okay, I'm gonna resume from right here, even though we probably covered this. We'll probably cover this. So, but this is where it gets a little tricky, which is why I'm gonna resume here. 
So the, when we talk about weak acids and bases, there's these guys are only partially ionized in water. So the K is gonna be much, much smaller than one. And this is gonna result in a reversible reaction where the reactants are gonna be favored. You're gonna have a much greater amount of HF than you're gonna have of H3O plus. And we can write a generic equation where HA is our acid, goes to H plus and it's anion. And for you can write this generic Ka expression for every single weak acid, where whatever your acid is, you break off a hydrogen and it's one less positive. If this was positive one, it goes to neutral. If it's neutral, it goes to negative one. If it's negative one, it goes to negative two. It's just you're adding a minus to whatever you started with. And that's the equilibrium expression for this equation. I've been getting a lot of questions on the homework about how do I write this equation and then you keep on trying to write the expression. So they're saying, what is the reversible reaction that gives us the Ka expression? So we wanna write the reaction that looks like this, not this on a couple problems on chapter 16. It's, uh, it's like, I, I like really cursing running down the hall from Dr. J's lab, trying to get everything in order before. I'm just lucky I had my computer turned on. Okay, for a base, it's gonna have the same thing. For KB, that's the basic equation where the base accepts a proton, it produces OH. KB will give us OH, KA will give us H. So now you can also write the reverse for KB, where instead of HF breaking off to form F minus, you have F minus absorbing a proton to form HF. So we can write these K expressions. And we're going to use these to find pHs or pOHs of weak acids. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's not too awful. It's not as bad as things will get. And of course, before I say as bad as things will get, well, we've already lost a week, so I'm probably going to cut some of that as bad as things will get out of the class. So, hey, it's going to be easier because of, thank coronavirus that we are. Coronavirus. That I'm making things uh, a little bit easier. We won't be, I think we probably don't need to do titration nearly as much. So, weak acids, weak bases, okay. okay. Yeah, please note, when you, if you titrate a weak acid with a base, it will fully dissociate because it will fully react because of Le Chatelier's. Le Chatelier says if you remove a reactant, it will, or if you remove a product, it will continue to form more products. So sodium hydroxide will completely react with the hydronium. So when HF breaks apart to form H plus, the sodium hydroxide reacts with that to form water. And so more HF will dissociate to react with the NaOH and keep reacting until we run out. Okay. We have Ka, Kb. Ka is related to Kb, and that Ka times Kb will still give us our Kw, 10 to the negative 14. So what does that mean? As the Ka goes up, so the acid strength goes up, the conjugate basic strength goes down. So a strong acid has a weak conjugate base, and we can actually look at that. But I think we did this clicker. I think that's where we, okay. So this is where we were kind of going. So I, I think this is where we'll actually start looking at this. I will probably not do too many quadratic equations. Once again, less time, less time to stress you guys. So, yay. So. But we will still use the ice table. 
Now, please note, the ice table will be the same for just about every strong weak acid, weak base scenario. You're gonna have your starting concentration. You're gonna have zero amounts of H plus and A minus. Your change is always gonna be minus X plus X plus X. Why is that gonna be true? Well, because almost all weak acids is, is gonna be a one to one to one ratio. So you don't have to like change it each time. Not like some of the homework, which was, well, that's two moles of that, or that's one mole of that, or that's three moles of that. So you don't have to worry about that. And so you get at the end, usually whatever your starting concentration is, minus X and X times X. And those are gonna be the same. So if we plug this into the expression, we get x squared over ha minus x. So in this case, with one molar is one minus x. Now, a lot of times, a lot of the times, we're gonna have ha over ka is much greater than 400. And if that's the case, remember we say that x is insignificant, that x is a rounding error. And if that x is a rounding error, Your Ka, if x is a rounding error, your Ka simplifies to, the Ka expression simplifies to Ka x squared over your concentration of acid. And how do you solve this? So we are solving for x. So we're going to move the one to the other side. So you're going to multiply both sides by your Ha concentration. And then that gets us this. And we're going to have to square root both sides. And that will give us our x. But remember, when we're doing these problems, we cannot simply stop there because the question typically asks for what is the pH, not what is the concentration of hydronium. The pH is going to be the negative log of the concentration of hydronium. So weak acids and weak bases are going to be something like HA times KA, square root of that. And then we take the negative log of those. Okay. Yeah, as I said, we can break down things into strong, moderately weak, and weak. Strong, oh God. strong is when we have a strong acid, it's just negative log. Weak, that's the ones we're going to deal with 90% of the time. I may throw in one of these guys. There may be one of these guys on the homework. But I highly doubt it. I'm probably going to skip through a couple of the examples of this. I might do one, but I'll skip through a majority of the examples. Because I try to shave a few days off the class, you know. We've lost a week already. On the ice table, where'd you get the 10 negative five? 10 negative five is the Ka that it would be given for that weak acid. Okay, All right, that's what you're saying. No, it's okay. So typically I will give you the Ka and I will give you the HA, the concentration of your hydrone of your acid and what is the Ka for that acid. And so and what we do I have? solve for X, which we would get through the ice table. Well, the, yeah, this expression right here, over here, is the what we'd get from the ice table. And that's true every time. Every time for a week of the most weak acid. Every time for the most weak acid where HA concentration over K is greater than 400. The, right. This is the hydronium. I'm giving you a shortcut right here. This is for the most weak. Oh, okay. Because the ice table, remember, is starting concentration minus X, and the other guy's just going to be X and X. And since they're mul both multiplied together, you get X squared. So now the moderately weak, as I said, I will probably not do too many of these if I do any at all. But these are ones where we have this X down here that cannot go away. 
and you will have to use the quadratic equation, which is our negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a to get the concentration x. That's ugly. And a will almost always be 1. Uh, b will be our ka. And uh, c will be our negative ka times ha. So if you if you do that, it's still a pain in the ass, but it's semi reasonable. But the idea being that the minus x plays a significant part, it will be a little bit worse than around, it will not be a rounding error, we cannot ignore it. And so if we want to get the actual accurate number, we have to actually include it. But as I said, I'm going to probably favor both the strong and the weak with a whole lot less moderately weak because of the sheer. We got a lot going on. Doing this online is not easy. Okay. So let's try this. Okay. I want to move this over here just so we can. Uh, let's see. Opening up paint so I can like work this out. So put that on. Okay. So what we have here, we we have let's define what we have. We're saying what is the pH of this molar boric acid? So the H A concentration is 0.3. Since Hunter's the main one talking, you can see that, right? See that on the uh, the paint? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. It's not the prettiest writing, but I'm sure it's uh, better than some of your handwriting. That that's so true. Okay. I'm offended. Well, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> what? I think there's a song called. Uh, you're so vain. I think this uh, comments about you. One of my teachers told me that m my handwriting looked like a spider walked into ink and then died all over the page. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so we have right there our two most important things. We've defined these guys. Now, if I divide the HA by KA, we'll find out, oh, that's a really big number. It's much greater than 400, meaning oh, hey, we don't have to use our quadratic. We can just use our ice table and we ignore the x. So our, we, our initial concentration is point three. Wait, how do we know that we're not using, how do we? I divide this by that. What's the 10th to the power? What's it, So it's 5.8 times 10 to what power? Negative 10. Okay. So, so that, please note, I've seen this a couple times, that capital E, on my slide over there, it means times 10 to whatever follows it. Oh, okay. Not, that doesn't mean exponential e. Those are two different things. Small e, big e, very, very different. I saw some people get some things wrong on the uh, test because of that. Oh, and I, but so we have that for the i and this for both of the uh, products. So divided, you divided those two, and since it was less than 400. It was greater than 400. Or greater than 400, then we know it's a week. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Okay. I'm just writing my ice table. Let's see if I can scroll. So, um, okay, let's finish my ice table off. Now, we're, because it's greater than... 400, we can say this is approximately equal to 0.35. We can ignore that negative x. That's what being weak means we can do. Because this is weak, that minus x is small. It is like third digit, fourth digit small. So that 0.35 minus 0.00. 0.01 0 
is going to round to 0.35 again. So, so is that true for all weak acids? You can just it's ignore all that. The, for all acids where, where the HA divided by K is greater than 400, we can say that that minus X is so small, we can ignore it. Okay. So for extremely weak acids, the dissociation is almost zero. That's what we're talking about. Okay. And that's what we're trying to do. Now, now with that in mind, our Ka expression, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select all and then just delete. Clear that out. So, with that in mind, our Ka expression, I need to draw now. Ka our expression is H plus, which is X, eight times A minus, which is X, all over HA. And we ignore water because water is a pure liquid. Pure liquid. So we don't include pure liquids. So what do we get? We get, so our Ka, which remember I said is 5.8 times 10 to the 10th equals x squared over 0.35. So now to get x by itself, I have to multiply both sides by 0.35. Now, I'm sure some of you can, you have a calculator, if you remember to bring your calculator home with you, to do that. 10 to the negative 10th, tenth, you get a really small number, you get 2.03 oh. times 10 to the negative 10th. Uh, oh, we might be running out of time after all, so. Eesh. Okay, so I might have to stop this meeting and start a new one, and I hate that. So either way, I'm going to finish this up, this problem, and then we'll worry about the next thing. And that's equal to x squared. And then you got to square root both of them. Square root both sides, and that will give you x. Now, x is equal to h plus, x is equal to a minus. Doing that will, so we square root that number. So square root 2.03. That gives you 1.42 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then we can take the negative log of that to give you pH. So we're taking the, how, why are we taking the negative log to get the pH? Because the negative log of hydronium gives you the pH. And this is, hyd okay, so we just found hydronium. Yes. Which, that's H H3O, right? Or H3O. Yes, the, the H3O or H plus, either one. Okay. Either one. Okay, with that in mind. So, but please note, if I take 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth as our x and say 0.35 minus that 0.14, 0.35 minus the 1.42 times 10 to the negative fifth, you get what? 0.349985. You would. I hope you can agree that 0.349985 would probably round up right back up to 0.35. And that's why we can ignore that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end this meeting real quick and see if I can get the other meeting started. If not... It says it, <laughs> it, says it upgraded to unlimited minutes. It did upgrade? That's what mine said. Oh. Mine said that too. Yeah, me too. Okay. Okay, well then. I really continue. If not, I mean, I guess I'll see if the Bethel will pay for a minutes, so that's not. Oh. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If this kicks me out, then we're done. And we've just spent the day kind of reviewing. If not, I'll get this sorted. Okay, well, okay. We'll just keep going. Okay, so, oh man, yeah, it is rough. It is rough. Oh, okay. 
I'm going to skip this one. This one would be one where we have to use the that one. Use that. We would have to use the quadratic where it's not weak. <laughs> okay, back to this. Let's see. So we got to take that number and then subtract it by what? Okay, so let's let's look at this again. So this one, this one's a little bit different in that because I'm, I'm evil. I don't know that. I'm, I'm the, C, the LC ton. Here we're saying the pH of a base. The pH of a base. So the base is 0 0.42. 0.42 molar. The KB is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 9. Now, ice table works out just the same. Ice table, because this is so weak, if I take 0.42 divided by 1.7 times 10 to the negative 9, you get 2.4. Like, but like 240. Wait, hold on. Hold so on. I don't. Are you are you supposed to be sharing the screen right now? Because I can't it, see anything. I don't I just, see you I just see your face. Okay. Well, I guess the screen share just dropped out real quick. I, was about to say, I don't know what you're subtracting. I see the 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. I don't know okay, what it what, is. What's it? Oh, geez. Okay. I only see his face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what. Oh, yeah. That's all I see, too. Well, let's see. Go back to share screen. Okay. Is it still, is it still recording? Let's see. Uh, come on. Can you get those numbers? Give me a second. Let's see. Oh, it's still recording. Okay. Good. I got those numbers from my slide, which where I say, here's the concentration of base, and here's oh, the KB oh. for the base. So there'd be, a question on the test would be, what is the pH of this molar solution of pyridine, which has a KB of this? So it wouldn't be that much more wordy than what we have right here, unless I wanted to add a, pyridine is used for this because of that. You know, like some little factoid that you, in one ear, not the other. So, for the case of how weak is this, you divide your concentration by your KB, and that will tell you how weak is it. And the answer is very, very weak. So weak, it was like, if you have to be greater than 400, this is like, uh, what, like 240, like, million something like that so that's greater than 400 so do we need to consider the x the answer is no so our ice table you can still fill in the ice table you don't have to fill in the ice table but i'm going to go ahead and do it until you get used to it zero zero that's our first value minus x plus x plus x and then finally, well, that's approximately 0.42 x and x. There's our equilibrium. Now, you plug them into your K expression. There's your conjugate acid. There's your OH concentration, x and x. There's your base, which is 0.42. I'm going to So we have plugging them in, we have one one point seven times ten to the negative nine equals x squared over point four two. With that in mind, x is not h plus. Because we're dealing with a base, x will be OH minus. So we do the same thing. We multiply both sides by 0 0.42. 0 0.42 times 10 to the negative 9 
0.42 times 1.7 times 10 to the negative 9. We can't see your, um, I cannot see your, your paint. Can you bring it over some more? Uh, can you see it now or, or is yeah. it? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay. So, so when we multiply, when we multiply 0.42 by 1.7 times 10 to the negative ninth, you get 7.14 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x squared. As we square root that, that will give us our x. But because this is a base, that x is equal to the OH minus concentration not the H plus concentration. You said this is the OH? This is OH because we're dealing with the KB, the K of the base. KB is for basic, the KA is for acidic. KB is for basic, produces a base. The KA is for acidic, produces an acid. So we find our concentration. So we take the negative log of this. Take, take, and take the negative log and that will give us our pOH. Our pOH because we're dealing with OH minus. You'll get a pOH of 4.57. How do we take the negative log again? You just hit negative and then log and then oh, okay. second answer. And so, so you get what did you four, say that it equaled? Four point five seven, I think. Yes, that's what I got. Okay. If you're not getting that, let's let's I'll make sure if, if you if you get something different, come like chat me. We'll we'll figure it on out. Come to his come to his office. Yeah, I'll say virtual office, Google Hangout, I don't know, Facebook message, whatever. We'll figure something out. Google Hangout. Yeah. Yahoo Messenger, I don't know. But uh, so that's pOH. Now to get pH, which is what the question asks for, you have to say 14 equals pH plus pOH. So if we know 14 and we know our pOH is 4.57, pH would be 14 minus 4.57 or 9.43. What's the formula for? Um, it's just pH equals pOH plus 14 plus. equals pH plus pOH. Or it's because I took the negative log of KW, and that gave me 14, and the negative log of H plus, which gives me pH, and the negative log of OH minus, which gives me pOH. I got you, I got you. So I took this expression, if you can see my mouse, I took this expression, and took the negative log of everything, and that's where I get the 14 equals pH and pOH. Because the, the rule of logs, means when I take a log of two things multiplied, it's the same as the addition of whatever the logs are. So the answer is 9.43. It's not 4.57. So 9.43, yes. 9.43. Okay, let's see. Well, we're running a little bit low on time. Let's see. I would like to see a, one more clicker. I saw one on the homework where you had to like take it from mass to gram. Is that something we have to do to something like probably that? Probably not. Okay. Okay. It looks like we'll probably not have a clicker today. Uh, we'll finish up just talking about polyprotic real quick. So some acids will have more than one protons like sulfuric carbonic or phosphoric, but these guys will lose them systematically, meaning that 
all of carbonic will lose one acid be before it loses the second acid. So for example, you're not gonna have a completely deprotonated carbonic acid until you get rid of all the bicarbonate. So we gotta first do an acid-base titration on this guy, and then we can do an acid-base titration on that guy. But you won't ever have a mixture of this, this, and that all at the same time. Because we all lose them one at a time. For sulfuric acid, we're going to lose the first proton completely. And when that's all used up, then we'll start losing the second proton. And when we do that, the second Ka is always much, much strong, smaller than the first Ka. So the first proton on sulfuric acid is a strong acid. Sulfuric acid is strong. It's dangerous. It's deadly. The second proton, not so much. It's a weak acid. Not much to worry about there. I mean, sure, it's not, not something I would suggest you drink, Hunter, but when does that ever stop you? Why is it always towards me? Well, you're the goofball here. Yeah, uh, true. I, I feel that. Please note, bleach will not cure the coronavirus. Do not drink bleach. Do not drink methanol. That will not cure the coronavirus either. Whoa, whoa right. wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> That's a good one. Bleach won't do it? Well, bleach on objects, maybe. Bleach down your throat, no. I gotta call a few people real quick. I gotta hurry. Yeah. Well, will HCL work? <laughs> uh, once again, well, well, yes, you will not have coronavirus. But, awesome. con, you will be dead. So <laughs> what I'm seeing is, is it's the give and take. Do yes. I either, yes. you know, <clears throat> what's worse, living or having the coronavirus? I mean, it's, it's a toss up. Yeah, so I guess so if someone we'll... sacrifices themselves right now, does that mean you still get all A's for the semester? Great question. Wait, so I have a question. So if I do it live on here, we, everybody, <laughs> gets, everybody gets A's. Someone take one for the team. No. I'll be right back, guys. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have some everywhere. I'm going to stop the I'll stop the screen share now. We'll, we'll start <laughs> off tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but <laughs> Wednesday. We're talking about the effect of pH active salts. Well, just knock that out. That's not too hard, but it's, it's essentially you're looking at. Hey, Carrie, you got any bleach? Oh, sweet. All right. That, that's what we'll start talking about next class. We'll not just finish the chapter out, it's not too long and start directly in on the chapter of buffers. Like, why is it bad to drink blood while you're at it, of drinking unusual things? Because that's going to throw off your stomach pH. What about, the, what about vampires, though? Well, you can drink blood, it just after a certain amount of time, your pH, your stomach's going to change, and you're going to get sick. So if you've ever, like, sucked on your thing and then you kept bleeding for a long time you can get an upset stomach hmm. okay <laughs> okay well thank you very much uh for interaction uh if you can't see this or you miss some it's going to be up on youtube in a little bit so hunter's goofiness will be there shame okay Thank you and see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Y'all have a wonderful day, everybody.